It opened pickle jars that nobody else in the whole world can open. My dad made one of our good spoons go down the garbage disposer. Yeah? Well, my dad can wear holes in his socks faster than anybody that my mom ever saw. <laughs> my dad can crack his knuckles. My dad drives a four-door sedan. My dad's car has four headlights. My dad can shave standing on one foot. My dad has a five-dollar gold piece. My dad is rich. Aw, oh, come on. He has so much money that he gives it away. I heard him tell Mom he was sending checks to every Tom, Dick, and Harry in town. <laughs> What's this bill from Detweiler's department store? What does it say? I don't know. I can't read it. They always manage to get the amount clearly enough, but what you're paying for is a mystery. I think it's a store policy to keep husbands from knowing what their wives buy. Let me see. <laughs> it says one dozen golf balls. Uh, honey, that television set's got to be fixed. I don't play golf. I know, honey. Uh, that Dennis doesn't play golf. Honey, I know. I wonder who around here could have bought one dozen golf balls. Well, uh, I could tell you, but my mother always said, son, never talk with your mouth full of crow. <laughs> your mother is a very wise woman. Seriously, though, honey, the bills this month are just fierce. Doctor, dentist, lights, water. There's even a two-month bill here from the Quigley grocery store. Well, how did that happen? Oh, last month's bill got jammed in the back of the drawer. I overlooked it. I'm afraid there's something else you don't even know about yet. What's that? I've lost my engagement ring. Honey, I'm just sick about it. Here in the house? Well, I remember putting it up on the sink last night when I started to do the dinner dishes, and it must have gone down the drain. Well, I'm not paying a plumber to come and get it out. I'll... I'll borrow a wrench from Mr. Wilson and check the drain myself. I'm home. Hey, Dad, the mailman left a letter for you. If it's another bill, I'll shoot myself. Shoot yourself? He's only fooling, Tommy. Dennis, have you seen my engagement ring? I've lost it somewhere. No, Mom. I haven't seen it. Now, this is what I've been looking for. Harassed by creditors, haunted by overdue bills, <laughs> borrowing confidence from the sincere loan company. I'm going to put this right up here where I can find it easily. Speaking of finding, I think I'll go upstairs and look for my ring. Oh, honey, while you're up there, you might as well change your clothes. We'll be heading for downtown pretty quick. Do you need money, Dad? I sure do. But I thought we were rich. I always felt rich. Well, in the way you mean it, son, we are. See? But not where money is concerned. There, we're a long, long way from being rich. I knew it. That's why I have to work my fingers to the bone. If I didn't, we'd lose the house. You mean like Mom lost her ring? Uh, no. You see, Dennis, the bank owns the house. And if I don't keep up the payments, well, they'll take it away from us. Jeepers. The same thing is true with the car. How about the TV set? Well, the store could take that. We make payments to them, even though it only works about half the time. Boy, I'd hate to lose that TV set. You can help me keep up the payments, Dennis. I can? Certainly. You're a very important member of this family. And, well, you can help me by not wasting food, turning out lights when you leave the room, things like that. I'm going to help you all I can, Dad. And from now on, if Mom puts it on my plate, I'm even going to eat liver. <laughs> you know what we're going to do while Mom and Dad are downtown, Tommy? We're going to make some money for good old Dad by selling bottles. You better give the money to your dad. I'd keep it. That's because you're just a little kid. I'm a very important member of this family, and Dad needs my help. We're so poor, we're right down to our bones. <laughs> Keepers, only two. Let's look in the refrigerator. They're all full. The 
bottles aren't worth anything fall. That's all you know. I'm gonna start up a root beer stand. I'm gonna make so much money that I'll probably take Dad downtown and buy him a new car. How much you gonna charge for the root beer? A penny for all you can drink. You won't make much money that way. Tommy, you just don't understand business. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell doesn't need Dennis's help. Sure he does. He told me so. Dennis is helping pay off the TV set so the store won't take it back. <laughs> Tommy. How much is your root beer? A penny for all you can drink. Well, you won't make very much money that way. Yes, he will. You don't know Dennis. <laughs> How much do you think I can drink? About that much. That's all I'll give. All right. I think that's about a nickel's worth. Thank you, Mrs. Elkins. <laughs> Here you are. Thank you. You know, Tommy, I don't see why Dad's having such a tough time. It's easy to make money. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Mitchell, but there's not a chance of finishing your car before five. Five? It's Henry, and we have a dozen errands to run. Well, I'll tell you, my son brought his car in for a lube job. You could use that this afternoon. Say, hey, we'd sure appreciate it. Well, there she is. Oh, I'm afraid we couldn't uh, possibly... What time did you say your hair appointment was, honey? That's what I was saying. I'm afraid we couldn't possibly make my hair appointment unless we used your car. Welcome to it. The keys are in the dash. Thanks a lot. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like transportation. Just in case we see anybody we know, we slink way down in the seat so they won't see us. <laughs> oh, God, and I tore my jacket. Oh, well, that coat was ready for the Salvation Army anyhow. Say, Mr. Mitchell. You may not have noticed that sharp place on the door when you got in. Watch it or you could tear your clothes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'll watch it. There we are. There are your peaches, Mrs. Burns. All right. Hi, Mr. Quigley. Mrs. Burns. Oh, hello, Dennis. Tommy? Keep away from the bananas, Dennis. You always say that to me, don't you, Mr. Quigley? I sure do. Is that on account of the time I unzipped him for you? That's right. I was out back in the storeroom. Couldn't have been gone more than two minutes. When I came back, he'd taken the skins off about 60 bananas. I thought they'd sell faster. They did. Your father bought them. <laughs> now, Dennis, don't bother me while I'm waiting on Mrs. Burns. Okay. Anything else, Mrs. Burns? Oh, no. 
Oh, yes, a dozen eggs. And you can just put all these things on my account, Mr. Quigley. A dozen eggs. Dennis, if you'll carry this bag to my car for me, I'll give you a nickel. Yeah, I don't think I'd do that, Mrs. Burns. Why not? With Dennis, something always goes wrong. Oh, nonsense. Dennis, you want to earn that nickel? Sure I do. My dad needs the money so they won't take our TV set away from us. They could even lose their house and car. What? Oh, come on, Dennis. I'm in a hurry. Yes, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> I told you. Whoops. It's your own fault. You shouldn't have put the eggs on top. I think some of them got broke a little. There's some yellow coming out. I'll uh, give you a new box and carry your bag out myself. Goodbye, boys. Bye, Mrs. Burns. Don't touch anything. <laughs> I guess he didn't mean these eggs, Tommy. Let's pick them up for him. Hand them to me, Tommy. You might drop them. <laughs> Careful. Careful now. Well, boys, we meet again. What are you doing with those eggs? We picked them up for Mr. Quigley. They got dropped because he put them on top. Mm -hmm. Mr. Quigley's carrying Mrs. Burns' package out for her. I wanted the job, but he got it. She's paying a nickel. Well, things must be a little slow for Mr. Quigley. I guess he's broke like my dad. Oh, Dennis. How's your mother? Not so good. She lost her engagement ring. Oh, what a shame. Oh, hello, Mrs. Alkins. Dennis, what are you doing with those eggs? I'm holding them for you. If you will hold still, you might drop them. Oh, Mr. Quigley, don't get so excited. Yeah, I always get excited when he comes in. When I was a young man, I drove a nitroglycerin truck in the Texas oil fields, and I was cool as a cucumber. But five minutes of Dennis, and I'm a total wreck. <laughs> now, what was it you wanted, Dennis? I got six pop bottles in my wagon, and I want to turn them in to get 12 cents to give to my dad. Yeah, all right, all right. I'll give you your 12 cents and get you out of here. Oh, for Pete's sake. Hey, Mr. Quigley, you busted a couple of eggs. Yeah, I know. Did you see that, Tommy? Mr. Quigley was putting those bottles on the counter, and he busted a couple of eggs. I guess he didn't see them. Didn't you see those eggs, Mr. Quigley? You put them there. For two cents, I'd sell this store and buy a nitroglycerin truck. Uh, here, here's your money. Now, run on home. For two cents? Yeah, for two cents. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm trying to make up my mind about buying your store. <laughs> See what I mean? He drives me out of my mind. Oh, you boys got to run along home now. Okay. Bye, Mr. Quigley. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. Bye, Mrs. Elkins. Goodbye. I'll be back later if I can find some more bottles to say you. My dad needs all the money I can get. <laughs> Bye. I want a bottle of cider vinegar, Quigley. Oh, I'll get it, Mrs. Elkins. I wonder what all that talk was about his father needing money. I don't know. Dennis said something about repossessing the TV set. Well, that's hard to believe. And the other boy mentioned the bank for closing on the house and the car. The Mitchells? Say, come to think of it, they haven't paid their last month's bill. If they don't pay it pretty soon, I'll have to cut off their credit. Uh, <laughs> just never know, do you? Charge it. All right, Mrs. Elkins. Bye. Bye. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Elkins. I wondered if you'd heard about the trouble the Mitchells are in. Well, let me tell you. They're driving in an old wreck because the bank has repossessed their car. And Mr. Quigley is about to cut off their credit. And little Dennis is out selling bottles so they won't lose their TV set. Why, you've never seen such a brave little boy in your life. Why, I just can't believe it. Oh, well, that isn't all. 
Mrs. Mitchell has lost her engagement ring. She's probably pawned it. <laughs> well, I'm just going to have to go over there and see for myself. I've always thought of them as one of the pillars of the community. <laughs> What do you think? Well, I don't know, Mr. Mitchell. I think I'd better take it back to the store. It's too big a job to do here. Okay, if you have to. Honey, I'm going next door and borrow that pipe wrench from Mr. Wilson. All right, dear. When will we get it back? Well, not for a couple of days, anyway. Well, don't get up, Mrs. Mitchell. I can make it all right. Well, bring it back as fast as you can. Our little boy will miss it. TV set back to the store? Yes, ma'am. How'd they do it? Oh, what a shame. Yeah, little boy's gonna miss it. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Holland. I just happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd drop by and say hello. I'm so glad you did. Won't you come in? Henry will be right back. He just went next door to the Wilson to borrow something. Oh, I hope I haven't come at a bad time. Oh, not at all. I was just mending Henry's old coat here. We're going to give it to the Salvation Army. Of course. <laughs> Could I get you something cold to drink? Well, thank you. Yes. Well, you come right in and sit down. I won't be a moment. <laughs> to speak to Dennis. There isn't a cold drink in this house. I just bought six bottles yesterday. Yes, sir, that boy's gonna have to have a little talking to. Well, come on in and say hello to Mrs. Holland. She just stopped by for a minute. Oh. <laughs> it's so nice of you to drop by, Mrs. Holland. Well, I'm glad I caught you home. You'll have to pardon the way I look. I was just about to do a little plumbing job. Of I could get a plumber, you know, but a penny saved is a penny earned. Believe me, I understand. Why don't we all sit down? Yeah. I'm sorry I can't give you that cold drink I offered you, but our cupboard seems to be bare. Oh, my dear, don't give it another thought. Mr. Mitchell, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Well, let us say that a young couple with a little boy are in financial difficulty. Now, do you think that they should forget their pride and accept charity from their friends and neighbors? Well, it would seem to me that that would depend on the actual circumstances of this hypothetical couple. <laughs> In here, Dennis. This is not a hypothetical couple, Mr. Mitchell. Their little boy just entered this room. <laughs> Not now, Dennis. But Dad, it's very important. Dennis, not now. Are you sure of your facts, Mrs. Holland? <laughs> we know, Mrs. Mitchell. In spite of their putting up a very brave front, we know. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm sure every member of the family would be grateful for any help that's given. You mean you wouldn't mind if we brought a few things here during the next few days? <laughs> We'd be happy to volunteer our house as a collection center. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mitchell. That was very delicately put. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I must go mobilize the neighborhood. Can I have something to eat? I'm starving. Oh, that boy, he's always hungry. Oh, I'll hurry just as fast as I can. <laughs> I think this is a wonderful thing you're doing. In this town, we always take care of our own, Mrs. Mitchell. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, what's going on here? Not now, dear. Uh,
Tommy, I just remembered your mother called and she wants you to come right home. Okay, Mrs. Mitchell. Bye, Dennis. Bye, Tommy. Bye. Poor little tyke. I'm amazed. I was talking with Mrs. Anderson only yesterday, and she seemed so cheerful. Honey, Mrs. Holland isn't one to jump to conclusions. He did! Guess what I got for you? Thirty-six cents! I didn't sell them root beer in empty bottles. So that's what happened to the root beer. Well, Father, do your duty. Uh, <clears throat> I get it for you, because I knew you needed the money. Oh, oh, don't you lay a hand on that child. <laughs> well, you couldn't have been more right. They're being very brave, but they're almost penniless. Well, I'm going to call everybody I know. We'll put the Mitchells back on their feet. Well, I'm going to phone, too. We'll get clothing, canned goods, everything. Do you know something? It's rather fun to be helping someone who isn't a, a Fiji Islander. <laughs> nice of you to give up your Sunday afternoon to bring these things over. I'm glad to do it, Mrs. Mitchell. <laughs> My, the neighborhood certainly has been generous. Yes, they certainly have. Is Mr. Mitchell home? No, he's over at the club playing golf. That seems a little peculiar. He always plays golf on Sunday. Dennis usually tags along. Well, I'm glad circumstances haven't forced him to change his routine <laughs> for afternoon. Good afternoon. I wonder what's the matter with him. In here. Hi. Oh, honey, good news. I found my ring in the clothes hamper. What happened to your eye? It's black and blue. It's the best one I ever saw. Henry, how did it happen? Tommy's dad did it in the clubhouse. Mr. Anderson was out playing golf while his family's going hungry? I was just about to walk up and tell him off when he walked up to me. What did he say? He said, Mitchell, don't you think a man ought to provide for his family before he plays golf? I said, I certainly do, Anderson. Boy, Dad and Tommy's dad were looking at each other so fierce they were practically touching noses. And then he said to me, Mitchell, don't you think that a man who plays golf under these circumstances is taking advantage of his friends and neighbors? And I said, frankly, Anderson, I think a man like that's a parasite. Then he said to me, well, what do you think ought to happen to a man like that? And I said, I think someone ought to punch him in the eye. <laughs> and you were right, son. Gee, was I? I didn't even know what we were talking about. I was just about to haul off and sock him when he hit me in the eye. I was going to hit him back, but the fellas held us apart. Boy, everybody was so mad at Mr. Anderson that they started slapping him on the back and making him smoke cigars. Oh, hello, Mrs. Holland. I heard about your eye, and I must say you deserved it. What? <laughs> Out at the club playing golf. What's the matter with that? You were playing golf while your neighbors were feeding and clothing your family. <laughs> you don't know what I think. I think you're pretty contemptible. But, but Mrs. Holland. <laughs> She seems to think we're the needy family. Well, where would she get an idea like that? From me! I told her what you said about you being poor. I've been telling everybody. Oh, it's terrible. No, it isn't. Remember when you were in the shower room putting the cool towel on your eye? Yes. I took up a collection for us in the locker room. <laughs> But they made me promise to give it to Mom instead of you. <laughs> 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 